What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be replacing my high pressure fuel pump on my Focus ST which is that shiny thing back there. And if you don't recognize that, that is because yours will have this sound damper on it which mine's all torn up and the car is already loud anyways and has all kinds of rattles so I'm not putting that back on because I don't really care. But mine has gone bad in my car and it has been throwing a P001 code. And um, I believe it's like circuit stuck open or uh, con idle control valve stuck. I don't know. Something like that. Something stuck open. And the car will not. Like it essentially, by the time that I got it to my home, I was a, uh, I was about an hour away. And um, it, the car barely made it back. If I was on the highway and even got on a slight incline, the car would just lose complete power and it would uh, go back down to idle and just basically coast and I had to pull over like five times because I could only drive it in lower gears to get it up to speed and then once I got it up to about it would only go to about 80 and I'd have to try to get up to 80 so that I could coast up a hill and then get to the other side so it was a huge pain but I got it home without having to pay for a tow truck and which was probably do as I say not as I do I would just get a tow truck because that could definitely damage stuff more but i wasn't really thinking like that i just kind of wanted to get back but it's been down for a while because i was deciding if i want to get a um, upgraded high pressure fuel pump so that i can um when i go big turbo i can essentially reach 400 horsepower without having to run meth but all of that aside I ended up getting a good deal on a high pressure fuel pump used off of Facebook whenever I was trying to post about some compatibility stuff. So I have this used one here. Uh, I really hope that this fixes the issue. I'm assuming that the sensor went bad and the thing about these sensors that sucks is that you can't replace the sensor. You just have to replace the whole pump which is like $200 if you want to buy it new. So there's that. But let's go ahead and get started with the installation. I have my little helper here, Gia. She's more focused on what's outside, but she's here to help. Um, first thing you wanna do, remove your engine cover and intake. I'm assuming if you're placing your high pressure fuel pump, you know how to remove the intake. It's just a few screws. Wiggle it out of the way, and then we'll have a little bit more room to work. So now that the intake is out of the way, um, we are going to get started removing um, the lines off of the high pressure fuel pump here. Um, there's going to be one that goes down to here. My harness is kind of covering it, but it's in there. But the first one we're going to take off is this right here. And mine actually looks a little different now that I look at it. Because um, I had to swap to an escape fuel. Uh, I think, I believe this is the high pressure uh, feed line of the fuel line. But don't quote me on that. I don't completely know what I'm talking about. Anyways... Um, my, the one from my, uh, that came on my car actually, uh, started leaking and spraying fuel inside of here for quite a while. And I went through like a whole gas tank in like two days. And I was like, well, why did the gas just run out that fast? That's really weird. And then it started smelling like fuel and I opened the hood while the car was running and it was just spraying fuel into a hot engine bay and somehow the car didn't blow up. But the only one I could find fast enough was a uh, Ford Escape one. So that's what I have. It doesn't really fit right, but it does the job. You will need these uh, two tools here to remove them. If you have an OEM Focus one, it'll have two holes on it. And you've got to get some fuel line pliers like these. And um, you'll get... I had to grind these down. I got them from O'Reilly's and they were just the crappy. They weren't made well. So I had to take my Dremel and grind these things down to make them smaller so they'd fit in the holes. And then you just put it in the hole and press in um, the tabs in there and then you pull back and you should be able to pull it off. Then you also need um, these fuel line removal tools here. And this is the one that I have used before. And I had to cut it here and sand it down so that it fits. But I'm assuming... Um, since this is an escape one, all I need is this tool and I don't need the other tool um, is what I've been told. So I'm going to just like slide this in here and then push it in and this should just come right off. 
and uh, that should be the process for moving this first hose. I do recommend when working on your fuel system to unplug your battery, so I disconnected the negative terminal. And I'm going to remove this. We're going to get all of the um, hoses and lines off first. Then there's this bracket and the plug. You can go ahead and unplug this plug back here. Uh, it's just this little tab. You heard it click. And you just got to wiggle it off like that. And then put it off to the side. So now that it's unplugged, we will be ready to take this line off. And also, I recommend covering your face holes with a uh, face shield when doing this because you should depressurize the fuel system by um, like pulling a fuse and start and trying to crank the car to uh, get all the fuel out of it. I don't really think you need to do that, but do as I say, not as what I do. So bleed your fuel system. I'm just going to put on a face shield, worst case scenario, and I'll just pull this off and I'll cover it in towels so it'll kind of soak up the fuel and I think it should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that first hose and then I'll show you what to do next. So that line came off pretty easily. I have it off to the side, soaked up some fuel with one, uh, which is a paper towel. Next one I loosened was this here with, uh, I believe a 17 millimeter, that's what it should be. I just use an 11 16th uh, open end crescent wrench here. Came right off. I had to tap it with a hammer a little bit to get it loose because there wasn't a lot of room in there to pull on it. And that one is loose. And this is actually the high pressure line. I misspoke earlier. This is the low pressure. Um, but this is what goes into the fuel rail. This bolt right here is an 8 millimeter. You'll want to remove that one. And there's another one down in here that's clamped into. Uh, that is eight millimeters that you will most likely have to loosen just so you can uh, move this out of the way to uh, get the new uh, pump in and out. And then there is one more uh, right down there that you will have to take off or loosen in order to get the pump out. And they just twist off like this. This one down here is the same as this. See that is, it's got fuel in it there. But um, these are also eight millimeters, and this is where you want to be careful because this is, um, it follows the cam, so it has a cam follower and it's under extreme uh, sprung pressure. So you'll just want to loosen those bolts, you know, like one turn at a time on each side until it comes completely up, and then uh, you should be able to just let it off with your hand, and uh, it'll be easy to go that way. And then you might have to rotate your engine in order to put the next one on. I'm not sure how stiff it actually is, but that is just what I've heard. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen all the bolts and try to slide it out. I also forgot to mention these bracket bolts behind here um, that are both 10 millimeters, and it helps to get the 8 mils out if you have a longer socket like this. Um, but I suppose it could be done with just a normal one. Um, this right there and that right there because you can see these are loose and mine's not coming up um i forgot there's that and you also want to have some paper towels handy because this will have fuel in it that will pour out um whenever you take it off you also if you're just changing your pump you don't need to loosen uh that one down there i just loosened this bolt here i didn't even take it completely off and you can see that's enough to just pull the line away um just to get the pump out and then uh, we can slide the new one in so I got the old one out, and I don't see any uh, abnormal wear, wear or anything wrong with the old unit, so I'm assuming it is the sensor, uh, given that this fixes it. Here is the new slash used one. Uh, I went ahead and already cleaned that whole area out, and whenever you put this back on, you'll want to get some oil and uh, oil this o-ring here. Uh, you can just dip your finger down in there and there should be a little bit enough for you to just oil up that uh, o-ring and you'll want to check the cam follower down in there and uh, Check to make sure that there is no abnormal wear there and just make sure that uh, everything gets cleaned up before you put it back together and Then uh, after that you're ready to just pretty much repeat the same process um, I just loosen this bolt here and mine was kind of seized on there. I took all the bolts off and um, nothing happened. Uh, and you can see it's kind of just this O-ring is in there. So it's a little tricky to get out, but I just kind of took a screwdriver and just tapped it in there with a hammer and was able to pry it right out. So I had no issue with the spring pressure or anything like that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put this new one in there and just do the reverse process. Get it all uh, buttoned back up and uh, we will see if it works. But it's just pretty much the same process. This is my uh, AdW1 catch can bracket. So that's why um, that's there if you don't have that. But uh, other than that, it's a pretty simple install. You know, just got to take some stuff off and then uh, put it back together. Um, this line, you just kind of move it a little bit and put it back in there. And the low pressure line here, you don't have to do anything when putting it back on. All you got to do is snap it back on and make sure you get this rear bracket here. That's the bracket that was back here at the two 10 mils. And uh, just get that put back on after you get the fuel pump on and you'll be all good to go. So everything is all put back together. Um, it was actually an easier install than I thought it was. Uh, I went ahead and put the um, sound cover thing back on. And uh, hopefully after I go drive it, I won't have that issue anymore. And it will actually let me drive on the highway and uh, hit the gas and everything. If not, uh, I guess it's back to the drawing board. You got to find some other issue with fuel. Um, and I might just go ahead and get the XDI fuel pump. I really don't want to spend the money on that because I'd rather do other things to the car um, before I go big turbo. My plan is to just do all the suspension, all the chassis bracing, handling mods, uh, some more motor mount stuff, and just get all of that done and have the car completely perfect and dialed and cosmetics are dialed. And then the very last thing will be big turbo. Um, you can see the bumper's all taken apart. I've got aero stuff to do. So the car is going to be um, being worked on, not being in a finished state for a while. So I'll just have to play it by ear. Might try to get it daily, but I'll keep you guys updated in the videos. But uh, that is pretty much it for installing a high pressure fuel pump on your Focus ST. Uh, like I said, it was easier than I thought it was. You could probably do it in an hour or two. Uh, I screwed around and I don't even know how long it took me. Yeah, I'm at two hours right now, and uh, I have not been very diligent with my working, so not a bad job. Uh, just be safe, uh, disconnect your battery, and uh, wear face protection, and you should be good. But other than that, please leave a like and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Nick Jernap, and I will see you in the next video.